Okay, here it is uh, all glued together. I used a super glue to glue all these uh, pieces together and it holds uh, pretty well. And uh, there's my uh, coil there on the bottom. I have it uh, operating at about the slowest speed I can at this time. And uh, what I used here as gliders so that the coil's not rubbing on the core is uh, two old dot matrix printers that I found, two identical ones, luckily. And uh, that's working well to uh, glide this uh, coil there. And I uh, used some old uh, pieces of printed circus boards that I stripped and cut to make my bridge across the two pieces there and all this structure on top and all that is super glued together. And this uh, connecting rod here to the uh, crankshaft is just a piece of aluminum uh, heat sink that I've just cut out. A, uh, so all this is made out of uh, salvage uh, pieces uh, that uh, we recycled. So that's uh, just that uh, electric motor that I have mounted on there, but there's, that's not doing anything. It's not connected. Uh, just using that as a pulley. And uh, I have two hall sensors, one there and uh, another hall sensor there and a single magnet. You see it going by there from time to time. And these hall sensors are coming here at the front and uh, luckily I found this amazing nice chip here. It's uh, CD4043 um, uh, I believe and what it is it's a latching uh, chip uh, so once it gets a, a, uh, a pulse it stays on until it gets a, another pulse to release it. So I'm using the uh, hall sensors to activate that. And I've got it configured in a way where actually I'm uh, sending out uh, AC. I've got AC pulses, which are then going to uh, directly inside my uh, H bridge here, which is uh, creating the uh, uh, AC uh, for the uh, coil right there inside. Right now I'm operating it off of a tiny uh, AAA uh, 1.5 uh, volt battery, but the battery is not at 1.5 volt, it's at 0.97 there. So uh, it's operating under 1 volt right now and it can go down as low as uh, I had it operating at about 0.75 volts. So as the voltage increased, the RPM increases. I didn't want to do a a high voltage uh, tryout right now. I don't want to break this thing apart and you wouldn't get it to see, to see it operating well too. So right now it's uh, drawing about 120 uh, milliamps, 115 maybe. It's fluctuating between the two off that little tiny uh, battery and there's still uh, torque left. If I put this uh, pencil here I can let it ride and this thing is still uh, capable of turning that and that's on the outside uh, rim here, so it's got a lot more torque in the center, like a normal shaft of a motor. Um, now the torque increases uh, as the uh, voltage increases, and what I'll do now is I'll connect a just a full uh, 1.5 volt battery, and you'll see the difference. Before that, let's just look at the scope shot here quickly. And uh, we are at uh, 2.3 uh, 2 hertz, it looks like. And uh, about 4.17 volts peak to peak. And uh, the high voltage uh, peak to peak is caused because when you have the, this is the, uh, the on here, the on pulse, you just saw one peak go up there. When it uh, comes on, this is at the end of, basically when it's coming on, it's coming off uh, as well at the time it comes off. So this is actually the flyback. So the flyback is automatically recirculate, uh, recycled in this uh, particular motor because it's using AC for it to flip back and forth. So as the uh, inductor here comes to its end and it's shut off, the flyback is going in the right direction at the beginning of this pulse and then the inductor is charged and again shut off and there's the flyback and ready to uh, start inputting the uh, next uh, pulse. So uh, that's a nice little feature about that. Uh, there's the uh, RMS uh, value there. 
And that's uh, what we're doing. So right now I'll just pause it and connect the uh, 1.5. Okay, there's the difference uh, with the uh, higher voltage. So we got a 1.42 volts across there. Oops, this meter is shut off. So now we're drawing about uh, 140 uh, milliamps at uh, 1.4 volts. And our frequency now has gone up. So we're now at uh, 4 hertz, basically. Nice, uh, clean uh, AC wave there. So this is uh, with my probe connected across the uh, coil there. Sorry if this video is getting long, hope you're not bored. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, there I go, it's uh, now connected. So now, I mean, I can probably put my finger on there and it, you know, there's more and more torque for, you know, before it comes to a, a stall. And uh, so on. So what I'll do now is I'll uh, connect uh, actually uh, these two batteries here in uh, series and uh, show you what it uh, looks like at around uh, 2.8 uh, volts. And uh, that's about as high as I want to go. I don't want to go with the 6 volts. Uh, it gets pretty crazy. And uh, what I want to do uh, for later on is I'm going to put a... Um, uh, to test it with a... Uh, with a pressure on it. Uh, what do you call that? A pony uh, thing. So that will be the next test. So a pony brake uh, will be the next test to uh, find out how many uh, grams uh, we can pull for the amount of power we're putting in. So let me just connect it and that will be the last test in the end of this video. Okay, so there you go. It's uh, now operating from uh, two uh, AA batteries in series, which are a little bit low and I have a total of 2.6 uh, volts and it's now drawing uh, 250 milliamps and uh, our frequency and peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage has increased quite a bit now and now we're at uh, 7.18 uh, hertz at peak-to-peak uh, -peak at about uh, around 10 uh, volts peak-to-peak -peak. and there's our RMS 2.3 volts RMS and uh, there you have it there's uh, as you see it's uh, pretty aggressive now and uh, I can put some uh, pressure on it now a lot more pressure before I get it to uh, stall and obviously you know we're putting in more uh, voltage and current and uh, so there so now the uh, next test will be uh, with the higher voltage, but like I say, I'll be using a uh, pony brake on it and uh, you know, putting a load against it so that it doesn't go uh, completely, uh, so it doesn't break apart basically. Uh, I don't know how many RPMs this thing can uh, take really. Anyways, that's about as high as I want to go for now and uh, hopefully uh, you can, uh, you know, Keep checking and uh, I'll have some uh, new updates. Uh, for now, I'll be uh, leaving uh, South Africa on the uh, 28th. I'll be returning to Canada and uh, I'll only do my uh, pony brake tests uh, once I return to uh, Canada. So it might be uh, another couple of weeks before I have uh, some results on this. Now, I'm not equipped here to do the uh, pony brake and I have to do research on all the specifications and all this needed and I don't have a scale and all that so I'll have all of that once I'm uh, back in Canada. So that's, uh, let me shut that off now, <laughs> that's about it for this. Uh, the other thing that I've never really taken into consideration uh, in this motor design is the uh, coil. Uh, the coil doesn't have much turns uh, so the, um, the uh, that might be a uh, a factor uh, that's going against all of this. So uh, I got to do also research about uh, the amount of time that that coil is going to be turned on. So I have to find out, I guess, uh, the voltage and RPM or the pulses uh, that I'll, I'll want ideally. And uh, 
find uh, the right uh, time constant or something like that. I've got to <laughs> research that as well to, uh, uh, you know, get that at the ideal uh, condition. So lots to uh, learn and uh, lots to uh, continue the uh, tests with. So uh, thanks for your uh, continuing uh, support and uh, I'll hopefully get you some updates soon. Bye now.